kept saying we needed another quad one win. We got it. <clears throat> thought our energy out of the gate was really good. The crowd, I, I mean, I want to thank the crowd. That was the best crowd I've you know, heard since I've been here. Kind of hit a fever pitch there when Herb stepped to the free throw line after they potentially fouled him, knowing he didn't have a strong hand, able to shoot, steps up with his we can goes two for two. That was unreal. The crowd noise when that happened. I think that was a recognition of the fact that he, such a warrior, stepped up with one hand, got 17 rebounds, and goes two for two with his offhand at the line. So, you know, a lot of big plays from a lot of our guys. Caleb Smith had some huge old boards. Reese hit that big three. Shackleford keeps putting him in points as a freshman. He's really got no fear of the game. So, Kyra came alive for us in the second half. And really, our defense has been pretty good all game. You know, we. Kyra had to come out there at the end when he picked up his fourth, kind of fell apart a little bit, let him back in. You know, maybe I should have just left him in. I, I kept debating whether to call a timeout to get him back in. And I knew the media was coming in the next one, and maybe I should, you know, something second guess. You, we won it, so it doesn't look like a bad decision now, but it could have been bad there at the end if I had gotten him back in a little sooner. So, but shoot, big win for us. Got to use this to kind of get us some momentum rolling here in the last third of the uh, conference play. Thanks, Coach. We'll take questions for Herbert and Jaden first. Starting the back left here with Michael. Right behind you, Mike. Yeah, Herbert, that going up to that uh, the line for the free throws, was there any debate to try to shoot right to left handed? And what was, you know, what was that moment like for you in terms of the threat on it? I mean, I knew I was going to shoot a right handed when I got injured uh, the first time I could come back in. In the gym, I started working on my uh, my right hand free throws. Like, I used to like play around doing it uh, like a while back, but I mean it came in it came in handy uh, when I got injured, and I just kept working and believed in myself. Uh, out the front right, Herb, uh, how much have you last week petitioned the coaching staff to see the floor and get the name that is possible? Say again. How much have you been petitioning the, the coaching staff? get as much time on the court as possible last couple days? I mean, I, I've been trying to get out there as much as I could. Uh, I had been sitting for a minute and had been itching to get out there and play with my with my teammates. And they, today, it, my, my wrist felt better than it did the Auburn game, and they let me play as many minutes as I could. Both players, real quick. Yeah, just knowing how much you need this win, <coughs> how much was it just a, a will or an effort out there that, to get this done? Coming to this game was going to be a tough one, a gritty game, where we came out with the right mentality, right effort. Uh, we were down eight at the half on the rebounding, so we just took a stand to probably win the rebounds in the second half, and we really cut it down to two, so it was big for us to come to this game to play hard. Back right, Cecil. Also for Shaq, this uh, about a minute and a half left, they've cut it to one, and you come down and hit a three-pointer. shots like that so when it comes to that point I'm confident in any one of us to take that shot so it happened to fall in my hands and I was confident enough to put it in. Right, let's go stay on the right side here with Drew. Uh, first this is uh, for her but I, I know you, uh, you you love the game of basketball. And you, have you ever heard of Bo Kimball and Hank Cathers because Bo kind of shot left-handed free throws to, to uh, as a tribute to Hank when he passed away and how long have you worked on that as far as to, in the, in, to make them and then for uh, and then also uh, for, uh, for Shaq, how big was it in your mind for Alex Reese to make that big three? Because he's been kind of struggling. Uh, I had been working on him, like just messing around earlier in the in, this, in the year. <clears throat> and then when I when I got injured, like the day I got back, I had been putting in as many hours as I could with my right hand free throws. Um, throughout the game, Reese has been struggling over the past few games, but. Throughout the game and through the timeouts, he was telling us that he was going to hit one and he kept pounding the stone and eventually it came in a big clutch time and it was really big for us. Okay, we got three questions left and a few for the players. Start with James up front. All right, for her, uh, 17 rebounds with just one hand. Uh, can you speak about the, the effort that it took to go out there and do that? And do you think you could have gotten even more if you had both hands available? Um, 
I mean, I just go out every night with the mindset to, to help my team in any way possible, knowing that I was going to be kind of shorthand on the offensive end. I just knew I had to, to impact the game another way, and I just, any time they shot the ball, I crashed, or I had to match up with Emmy Williams, which is a great a great rebounder, and I had to box him out and keep him off the glass. It opened my, myself up for, for a lot of rebounds. And we got Chris right here in front, and we'll close out with Michael. Two things real quick. Her, can you describe how sore your wrist gets, even at this point? Uh, it doesn't get it doesn't get too sore now. I've been putting a lot of time in the training room with Clark. Uh, so, I mean, especially during the course of the game, it doesn't get too sore unless it's just like a, a direct hit to my wrist. For both players, was this a must win? Sure. Well, definitely. Uh, <coughs> came off a tough loss at Auburn, feel like my guys fought hard. We knew coming to this game, we had to come in and get this win. That's a quad win for our record to you know, get us up in the net or whatever. So we came in and we had to get this win. Oh uh, yeah, we we knew coming into the game that we had to get it. And it was our last home game, at the quad one home game. And so we just had to make a statement, go out and play hard. Last question for the players, back left again, Michael. I heard one more. Is that, you had a stretch area, you got maybe three or four straight defensive rebounds on that end. Well, you, can you get into a zone getting rebounds, or are you just kind of possessed in there to, to make sure they couldn't get the second chance points so they got down and out? Yeah, we talked about that coming into the game, limiting the second chance points because they, they had a lot of them when we went to their place. And uh, I mean, just coming into the game, I had the mentality that they wouldn't get too many if they did get any. So yeah, I kind of locked in and not, not uh, give up the second chance points. All right, you guys are good. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll take questions for our coach at this time. Let's we'll start with Cecil on the mark back right. Coach, you've had some frustrating situations on the road, the Florida game, the Auburn game. It, it gets down under two minutes and they cut it to, to one point. What, what did it mean to sort of see your guys make the plays that they had to make in that last uh, shoot a short. We have to run out and win close games. I mean, that's part of, you got to be able to do it against a good team. I mean, beating Georgia in overtime was good. We need to win a close game, but that's a lot different than beating LSU. I mean, Georgia's, I think, the second worst team in the league right now, if I, if I recall correctly. So winning against a team that was number one in the league is a lot different than winning it against the team at the bottom of the league. So I thought it was huge. I, I didn't like the fact that we let them cut it to one when they did. That kind of coincided with Kyra coming out of the game, which you know, I, I still don't remember his third foul. I, I, I kind of have to go back and watch that on video. I, I didn't realize he had three. I didn't realize he had three. That's on me. That's on the staff. They got to let us know. Apparently, they were trying to let me know when he picked up his boards right after it. but. You know, he's got to be in the game. I mean, we, we tried to get him a few breaks tonight. You know, he ended up with 36 minutes, but probably three of those four minutes he was out was when they made that huge run to cut it to one. So he probably needed him to play 39 minutes tonight. If he played 39, I, my guess is they never cut it to one. So it was big for us to be able to win it, though, doing that. we got to take care of the ball a little bit better. You know, we only ended up with nine turnovers, which is a lot better than we had been, but we did have some turnovers that are late that we really come for it. Back middle, Gary. Coach, uh, in the first half, and I could be wrong, but it appeared to me that tempo was a little slower than normal. We're getting deeper into the shot clock. Coming off the back-to-back -back overtime game, was that by design or no, I just reading it? I, I didn't think our guys were aggressive enough out of the gate. You know, and they're, when LSU's got length, they were switching some stuff, keeping us out of lane, but we, we, we had to get them all in the paint, give them more, a few more driving kicks. And I, I was a little frustrated with how late it was getting the clock for no real reason. I mean, they're, they're not a bad defensive team by any stretch, but I, I didn't think that they were that great that we should be having to go under 10 seconds on the shot clock as often as we did in the first half. Back far right, Drew. I know if you always preach blue collar and that's your identity. You ever had a player with a blue collar performance more than Herb Jones today? No, I mean, I think he ended up with 35 points. That's ridiculous. And he did it with one hand. I, I, I'm, I'm getting chills now. I was getting chills when the crowd went nuts when he got uh, went two for two at the free throw line. I mean, I think our fans know 
What a warrior that kid is. They wanted to reward him. Rousey ovation they gave him when he went two for two. They know all he cares about is winning. And he, he I mean, for a guy to just continue to come in and out, in and out, every time we get a, you know, a whistle going offensive end, he's coming out. And every time we get a whistle going defensive end, he's going back in. He, I mean, he's, he was cool with just playing defense the whole game. He doesn't really care. He just wants to win. I think our people recognize that. Uh, I, he's a winner. He's been straight down back. Even if he's only got one arm, he's straight down back. Front row here, Alex. Hey, there was a uh, point, I think, about eight minutes into the, the first half where uh, you called timeout and some frustrations with either the 72 or 52 foul differential. Spoke to the refs. It seemed to flip the script a little bit. What did you say to kind of get things to maybe go your way? And how big was that transition there? I don't remember, to be honest with you. I don't think I called a timeout until late in the half, so most of it's just the okay. media timeout you're referring to. I uh, usually Talking about matching calls one way or the other, so I'm guessing I felt like they called one against us that they didn't call against them. I, I don't remember to be honest with you, but court. you literally went to half court. Oh, that was when I was trying to talk. Yeah, I, I do remember. Uh, I wanted to, yeah, talk to. Um, I, mean, I think it was a Landis that called a, a rebounding foul on JD early in the game, and then I felt like Shaq had had the ball in his hands and got his arm hit off and ended up not getting the ball. Thought it was identical. I mean, you never had a hundred percent identical, but thought it was close enough that you got to match the calls. And I went to try to talk to him, but Doug <coughs> Shaw didn't let me talk to him, so I never got to talk to him. Just told Doug what I wanted to tell him. Probably never got portrayed him though. Sorry, coach. We got time for three more questions. We're not going to get to everybody. Let's start in the back left here to, with Michael. Last time they out rebounded you guys forty nine thirty one. How do you think that dynamic changed and what was different about the way you guys well, That was bad early for sure. I mean, we were down big on the glass out of the gate. I think we were plus seven in the second half. I remember, I think we were down nine at the half, if I remember right. 38 29 rings a bell, something like that, uh, or 28 19. And then, uh, so we were plus seven in the second half, to only lose it by two after being down nine at the half. It's huge. You know, Evan Herb in there for close close to 29 minutes, grabbing 17 rebounds. I thought the other guy that's maybe a little under the radar had a great game was uh, Gail Smith. You know, I mean, if you look at what he did in 16, seven, you know, close to 17 minutes, 10 points, six rebounds, four offensive rebounds. Those offensive rebounds he got late in the game, reset the three off it, that was, that was a huge shot. I think that went from two to five, if I remember right. I think it was 82-80, and we, he got an offensive rebound and got it around the reach to get the three to go 85-80. That's a game-winning play, and Galen made a few of those late. So I was really happy for Galen. He's, he's been working. I mean, we've had a lot of guys basically like, we got to draw a line in the sand here. Like, are we going to keep losing close games? Are we going to get in and do what it takes to win them? G's been in working with Coach Hotch and a lot on his free throws. I was fired up. He went six for six to start the game out at the free throw line. That was big for him. I mean, he ended up missing that one late, but six for seven is great for Galen. So, uh, Really happy with the rebounding overall. Just bad start to it, but I thought our guys pulled it together there as the game went along. Right, last two questions, Gary, then we'll close the group. Coach, I think you kind of hinted at this strongly earlier. Were those 35 points good enough for her to get today's hard hat? You want it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you definitely, definitely want it today. Sure, you guys Took a few charges, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, two more questions, Coach. First, uh, talk about the, the game Kyra Lewis had. Uh, he, I, his decision making seemed to be really good. He was able to make the three. Uh, and then also uh, with Herbert Jones, it's not just the rebounding. But talk about his basketball IQ and his passing. I thought he did a really nice job playing a floor game today with one hand. Yeah, I mean, you see he's mainly passing with his right hand. And, I mean, he got it to him a few times. They collapsed inside. He's been working with him kind of on right hand finishing, spinning it whichever way to – we missed a couple early, but he got the one. Uh, we're just going to keep working with him. Hope, hopefully at some point this year he's, he's able to use his left hand a little bit more. But until then, it's too valuable for us. We're, we're gonna, we, you know, we may have to just start leaving him out there on offense because you can't afford for him not to be on defense if you don't get a whistle. I, they missed the one. I was trying to call a timeout there late to get him back in on D. They missed the one. I got the next one to get him back. 
We need him in there on every single defensive possession, closing the game out. But we're gonna keep working with the right right hand as much as we can. Now with Kyra's deal, I think he's 17 assists and two turnovers in the last two games now. That's it's a pretty good floor general. We need him on the floor. He played 45 minutes last game. I, you know, if he had to get the foul trouble, he probably would have been about 39 this game. And you know, we need him out there. I thought he really came alive in the second half. I, you know, I kind of went up past him with his wife retired. I didn't think he was aggressive enough out of the gate in the first half, but he got real aggressive. Like we needed him to in the second half. You know, ends up with 27 points, four or six at the three point line. He's another one like he's a better shooter than what he's been showing. But you know, he's been in the gym a lot of working. These guys are these guys want to be good. We got a lot of guys on this team that really want to be great. They're in the gym, studying the film. Flip's in there working on his right hand. Tyler's in there working a lot. Shaq's in the gym a lot. Forbes been in. JV Davis, Galen. I mean, there's a lot of guys been in the gym a lot. So Reese, I was happy to see Reese come out and knock down a couple. He 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 should I I was getting my workout in Thursday after practice, after everybody had left, and I came back in about an hour after practice was done. He was back in shooting on the shooting machine about an hour after practice Thursday. So I think guys want to win. Like we, we just need to make some shots, take care of the ball, get some, get some rebounds, get some stops, and get this thing. We can get on the run here. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.